Hi, I'm Tom Summers with the Diner Realty and welcome back to my continuing video series on the top 10 questions to ask before making an offer on a short sale. Today I want to focus on question 6. Is this an investment home or a primary residence for the seller? This is a really big question to ask and I'm sure most of you are thinking, well, what's the big deal? A short sale is a short sale. No. When you hear all of these nightmare scenarios out there about people that couldn't get it done and this and that and the other thing, not knowing answers to questions like this can sometimes be the cause of that. So why this question is important is, again, it's learning more information about the seller situation, engaging the possibility of you getting a short sale done and you guys owning the new house. So let's start with the primary residence. If I'm just a regular seller and I'm short selling my house and this is where I live, I typically have a much better chance of actually getting the short sale done and through with a bank or even the second bank, getting it to close and having the buyers get into their new home. With an investment property, things are different because the banks say, all right, well, more than likely this person has other real estate holdings. They maybe have a business. They have you know, money elsewhere in, in different things because chances are that if this is an investment property, they bought it to rent or they bought it to flip and sell after they improved it. There's many different things that they could have been doing with the property. So it makes the short sale a little trickier because more than likely, but not always, the first as well as the second could come back and say, fine, we'll allow the short sale at this particular price, but we're going to want a promissory note to be signed at closing by the seller saying that, you know, you will pay us back X amount of dollars over a certain amount of time. Typically they don't charge interest, but they'll do the promissory note where it's, you know, $200 a month for the next five or 10 years, whatever the case is. So if you've got a seller who has absolutely no money or they're digging their heels in the sand saying, I don't care, even if the bank comes back, I'm not going to sign anything like that and I have no money to put forward towards you know, finishing this short sale off, it's something that you're going to have to consider because maybe this is one you walk on and say, oh, well, you know, the risk is maybe a little too high and we're going to lose too much market time waiting around for a short sale that might never happen because we don't have a seller that's agreeable that wants to get out of this property as bad as we want to get in. Because that's the key component to a short sale is you have to have some seller that understands that, okay, the best thing I can do for myself as a seller is to negotiate with all of these different banks, get out from under my debt and walk away not owing not only the original mortgages but owing no money after that. So if you have a seller who just doesn't really care about that and they're trying to avoid foreclosure but they're not willing to step up to the plate and bring some money to the table in an investment situation, you've got to ask yourself is this worth going down this road because it may very well not be. So again, another important question, please look at all of the other ones that I've posted already and I'm going to be doing the rest of the series of 10. You can find other videos that I have on YouTube, just go there to that website and then type in Realtorology under the search phrase and you can see all the other videos. Thanks for taking the time today to watch the video and I hope this has been helpful. Have a great day.